Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my guide to the Great Google Library Hard Mode, one of the new expert dungeons in patch 3.4. You will unlock this dungeon from the quest, let me Google that for you in Idleshire, and it requires a minimum item level of 210 to enter. It will reward item level 225 armor, as well as elegant tomestones of lore and scripture. This dungeon is broken up into three bosses with some trash in between. To skip to a specific boss, please use the annotations in the top left hand of the video. The beginning of Google Hard Mode is nearly identical to Normal Mode. The mobs themselves are a bit different, but you have the choice of doing big or small pulls here, so just go at your own speed. The Babuolus, before the first boss, can deal pretty high damage, so just make sure to avoid their AoEs and heal through any of the unavoidable damage. After these Babuolus, you'll be at the first boss. The first boss is the Demon of the Tome. Also, pretty much like the first boss of Google Normal Mode, it's a pretty basic fight. The boss himself has a tank buster, but he mostly spends his time summoning books to squash you. When he drops the big book in the middle, it'll knock you back. You'll want to try to stay close to it without standing under it, so it doesn't knock you back into any other books that might drop afterwards. If any of the books or their AoE blasts hit you, it'll give you vulnerability stacks, but it's really just all about avoiding these book AoEs as they come out. Power through and move on. The trash in the second part of the dungeon hits a bit harder, especially with the large demons that hit the tank really hard. Fire will drop in your path at one point, which does pretty high dot damage if anyone steps in it, so make sure to fight the mobs away from that thing. If doing big pulls, make sure to have some cooldowns available for the number of mobs you'll be dealing with, especially for this specific section of the dungeon. After taking on some relatively weak forbidden tomes, jump up to the second boss. The second boss is Living Flame, and he is mostly an easier version of Living Liquid from Inside Alexander. He's also a direct reference to the same boss in the library in Final Fantasy V. He has three forms, Human, Hand, and Tornado, each with their own mechanics. In his Human and Hand form, he has a pretty strong cleave, so watch your tank positioning. In his Human and Tornado form, he has a room-wide AoE that deals moderate damage, it's named Biblioside. Each form has its own attacks that it likes to use on the party. In his human form, he will simply place a bunch of AoEs under players that you'll need to run out of. You'll recognize them from Ifrit. He does several of these back to back, so don't get too greedy with stopping to cast spells. He will also tether to a player and jump to them after a short delay, dealing more damage the closer the target is to the boss. Just create some distance if you get tethered, and it's no problem. When he transforms into a hand, his only big mechanic is Seal of Night and Day, which was not present in Alexander Normal at all. Each player will be marked with either a Sun Sigil or a Moon Sigil. Basically, you just need to run into one of the lit up circles in the arena that matches your Sigil. AKA, if you have the Sun Sigil, go stand in the Sun AoE. Moon Sigil, Moon AoE. When he transforms into a Tornado, his first Biblioside will cause the outside of the arena and under his hitbox to become a Fire Puddle, which deals damage over time to anyone inside of it. When Living Flame casts Pharaoh Fluid, he will mark himself and the entire party with either a plus symbol or a minus symbol. He will then tether himself to each player and force them to remember how magnetism works. If you have a charge matching Living Liquid, aka he has a plus and you have a plus, you want to stand in melee range of him. Not too close because you don't want to walk into that fire puddle under him by accident. If you're the opposite charge of him, he has a plus, you have a minus, or vice versa, you'll want to stand as far away as possible without stepping into the fire along the outside of the arena. It's just a few simple mechanics and they're only one at a time, so just take care of them and Living Flame will not be a problem. The final bunch of trash in Google Hard Mode has mostly pirogos and animated knights and mages. The animated knights can do incredibly high damage since they all have a hard-hitting tank ability, making big pulls here a bit riskier for groups with little experience. Before the final boss, you'll also be forced to fight a mini-boss, Appenda. He occasionally roars to give everyone a stacking vulnerability debuff, as well as uses magic to hammer, which, if it hits you, drains all of your MP and TP. Definitely avoid that. Kill Appenda and move on to the final boss. The final boss is Strix, who requires the party to do a fair number of mechanics. He himself doesn't deal too much damage, but he does have a tank buster that can deal a decent amount if you aren't careful. Occasionally, Strix uses Check Out, which requires the players to do mechanics based on the books that he places on the ground. Each of these mechanics will be called On the Properties of Blank, which for the sake of the guide, we'll just fill in the blank. Failure to do any of these mechanics results in pretty high damage taken. When he summons Levitating Circles, you'll need to stand on these to dodge his Quake attack. Reminder, that's on the properties of Quake. Just fill in the blank. 
When he summons a gravity circle, which look like black circles on the ground, you'll need to stand in that one when he starts casting his tornado attack. When he summons an imp circle, which is a light circle that's on the ground, not levitated up in the air, you can use this circle to cleanse yourself of the imp debuff he puts on you before he shocks you with a thunder AoE. Make sure you're spread out for that AoE and that you're not an imp when you're actually hit by it. When he eventually summons a behemoth in the middle of the room, it's gonna drop AoEs that you'll need to dodge over and over again. It'll also drop meteors on the ground that deal proximity damage, and you're gonna have to use these meteors to LOS his meteor attack. That's line of sight. Make sure the meteor is between you and the big behemoth in the middle of the room. Failure to do this mechanic is gonna probably kill you. In fact, it will kill you. As the fight progresses, he usually summons his books in the order, or at least this is what I've seen every time, the levitation books first, then the gravity and the imp books at the same time, then the behemoth, and then he starts mixing all three of the previous ones. His on the properties of darkness attack can't be countered, so don't try to step in one of the circles to avoid it. It's just party-wide damage that you need to heal through. It's a pretty neat boss, but don't let the wealth of mechanics overwhelm you. Just take it nice and slow and pay attention to the abilities he's casting, as well as the books on the ground, and you'll clear this one easy peasy. Thank you for watching my guide to the Great Google Library Hard Mode. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for all the latest Final Fantasy XIV news, information, guides, all that stuff, and be sure to check out the other videos on my channel. Anyway, thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.